Hello everyone and welcome to the Dr. Noella Moga Mentor Series. Our motto is each one teach one. Today I will be chatting with student doctor June Nyanga about her journey to become a medical doctor. June is a third year medical student at the University of Texas Health Science Center in San Antonio, class of 2019. She will discuss with us about her childhood, her education, and about her experience as a medical student. So stay tuned and don't go back and we'll be right back. June Yanga, it's a pleasure to meet you. It's How are you doing today? It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Okay, I'm okay. happy to be here. Thank you so much for agreeing to do this interview with me. So my, que my first question is, tell us a little bit about your childhood. Okay, so for me, I was born in Kenya and I came to America when I was about 10 years and we stayed in Dallas. I went to uh, college in Dallas and moved to San Antonio when I started medical school. Right. So for me, um, initially I wasn't quite sure what, what, I what I wanted to do in medicine, but I knew I wanted to be in medicine. So early on in high school, I started volunteering in my local community, volunteering in a nursing home, a hospital, a children's hospital too, just to figure out what kind of setting I wanted to work in. And then when I started undergraduate, um, my school had a health professions office, so for students who were pre-med. So I met with them just to kind of get an idea of what I wanted to do, what I needed to do early on in order to prepare for med school. So a lot of those things um, just like keeping your coursework, um, keeping track of your coursework. So there are certain things you have your prereqs, so just knowing what they are and making sure that it's built into your degree. My degree is not a uh, traditional science, so I had to go out of my way to get some of those courses. And then just different activities you could do, how to get involved in research if you're interested in that, and just different extracurricular activities that are um, available for you in your different colleges and universities. Okay, so we're going to move on to our uh, fifth question. Mm -hmm. So getting into medical school requires meticulous planning, yeah. but it also means that you need a lot of support from your friends and family. Yeah. Uh, how did your parents support you in your, in your quest for getting into medicine? So my parents were very good about supporting me. My mom is actually a nurse, so she knew the rigor of just getting into medical school and also being in medical school. So when we were at home during the week, she wouldn't, um, like she would permit us not to do chores during the week and so we'd save it up all for the weekend. We'd clean, do our laundry, clean our rooms. And so that really helped a lot. It helped me focus uh, mainly on studying during the week. And then also in school, I was involved in a lot of healthcare extracurricular things. Um, I started in high school, so at some point I didn't know how to drive. So they were very involved in driving me to those things, sometimes early 5 a.m. in the morning, driving me to a competition or stuff like that. And they were always very good about cheering me on and supporting me. Yeah, thank you. That's, that's <laughs> so important for, for people to yeah. know, even for parents to know, that it's never really that you just did it yourself. There's always Agreed. a number of people behind you that allow you or give you the space yes. to get into medical school. Yeah. So um, please share with us, how, how grueling was the application process for you? It was, <laughs> so for me, it was, it was grueling. Um, it, actually, it's a little bit more tedious. Um, but for me, what helped me a lot, like I said, my school had a pre, a pre health profession office, so I went to them, and they had a little template that they had that if you filled out when it came time to apply, it was pretty much copying and pasting. So uh, one thing that surprised me about the application, if you're watching this video early on, even in college, you need to start documenting the extracurricular activities that you're doing. And what surprised me, even the hours matter. So when I was going through it, I had to go back through emails just to figure out how many hours that volunteer activity counted. I mean, you can do an estimate, but it's just better to have it as you're going along, just documenting. And also just paying attention to professors that you click really well with. They could be potential sources of letters of recommendation. And if you get involved in research, um, get to know your faculty advisor, um, your research advisor. And they are also another good source of letters. So June, were you pretty sure 
were you very confident about your chances of getting into medical school? And also, were there any surprises? I, I wasn't really sure. Um, when I applied, I knew, like, again, I met with the health professions office in my school. So I kind of knew I was competitive, but, um, the, you know, you're not really assured. So I applied and they had told us there are a certain number of interviews. I forgot exactly how many that once you get that much, at least you, you have very high chances of getting into a school. So that reassured me once I hit that number of interview invitations. Okay. Um, did you have a backup career? I did not. <laughs> so my plan was, I was in med school all the way, I wanted to be a doctor, and my plan was if I didn't get in, get in that cycle, I would do, they have what they call, I think it's called an internal review, where you could call the schools that you apply to and ask them if they could go through the application with you and kind of tell you about your strengths and your weaknesses. So my plan was to do that if this didn't work out, and then, um, figure out what my weaknesses were and work on those and then reapply again. Describe the day you received your acceptance letter to medical school. So um, that day was very surreal for me. I remember I was at work and I checked my email and I saw the acceptance letter and I couldn't believe it. And it was around lunchtime. So I told myself, okay, I'm gonna minimize this and go for lunch. And if I come back and the email is still here, then it's true. <laughs> and so I went for lunch and I remember telling my coworkers, I think I got into medical school and they were happy. And then I went back to my desk after lunch and I checked and it was there. And I was like, oh my God, I got into medical school. So then I called my mom and she was just screaming in joy. She started choking, <laughs> but thankfully nothing happened. And then the rest of the day is just a blur. <laughs> that is so beautiful, <laughs> so beautiful. Yes, yes. June, the focus of our talk is each one teach one. What can you tell the child who is 11 years old, you know, living in Arizona who wants to go into medicine? I would say start um, volunteering, as, especially as at that age, so young. You have a lot of opportunities within your community. I think that's the biggest thing. Start volunteering, immerse yourself in things, and that will kind of give you a better idea of you're interested in career in medicine. What, what exactly do you want in medicine? Do you want to become a nurse? Do you want to become a doctor? Do you want to become um, an EMS, there's so many careers in medicine off the top of my head. Those are the ones that I could think of. But the more you volunteer, the more you see different healthcare professionals. And that kind of gives you an idea of exactly what you want to do and also what kind of settings you want to work in and if med medicine is really for you. Uh, and now to expand further, what advice do you have for parents of young children uh, who are exploring the possibilities of entering medical school, medical school. I think as parents, the biggest thing that you could do is support and encourage your children. So support them as they're trying to um, explore the different careers they want to go to, just gently um, providing them with uh, suggestions of opportunities, not being very pushy and kind of letting them make their own decision in that regard. And just as, as they're trying different activities, just letting them do it, Take going there, if, there's, if it's competitions, going there and cheering them on. If they don't win, encouraging them and just being present and there for them as they're going through their journey. You're already in medical school, you're a third year student. Can you tell us what it's like to be in medical school? So <laughs> being in medical school, it, it goes, it has its waves, its ups, ups and downs. Um, and every year is different. So I remember first year, First year, first semester is difficult, um, and most people will probably agree with that. It's just medical school is a very big transition. So first year, first semester, is it was a horror for me. <laughs> but we made it through. If you got into medical school, you'll make it through, hopefully. Get help when you need it. Um, and then first semester of first year of medical school gets a little bit better. You start adjusting. Second year is... Um, a lot of fun. Third year is even more fun, but it has its days. So third year, what I really like about it, um, you get to finally 
put into practice what you've been learning the first two years. You're interacting with patients, so you're getting to see how the healthcare team is making a difference in the patient's lives. And you're also getting exposed to a myriad of things that um, depending on what kind of doctor, you may never get to see again. And then fourth year, I haven't gotten there yet, but I've heard life is good in fourth year. <laughs> I concur. <laughs> now, June, our last question is, um, what do you do to distress? I know medical, being a medical student is a full-time job, and it can get quite hectic and stressful. So share with us if you have any hobbies that you do from time to time. Yeah, so um, it's going to be different for everybody. What I would say um, for everybody, get a good close group of friends, um, people that you could talk to and distress with at the end of the weekend, especially third year. You're going to see a lot. You're going to be exposed to a lot. And sometimes you might see patients die too. So it's nice to have that good close group of friends that you could come home to and call and talk to and de-stress. Um, other, um, my hobbies, I exercise. That's a really good way to distress. It makes you feel better and it's also good for your body. It doesn't happen as often as I would want it to happen, but that's a, a good way. I'm also very religious, so going to church is helps me a lot. And again, volunteering helps me, especially in something that you really like and enjoy doing. It, sometimes you lose sight of why you're doing what you're doing, and when you go back and volunteer, it kind of uh, re-energizes you. So June, once again, it's a pleasure. Uh, thank you very much for talking with us. Mm -hmm. um, it was my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Yes, ma'am. Now, everyone, you are watching an episode of the Dr. Noella Morgan Mental Series. Subscribe to my channel and see you soon for more videos. Bye. Bye. Bye.